Hey, what's up guys? It's Jonathan with Rev Free Moto. Today I'm going to be changing my oil for a break-in oil change on my 2024 Toyota Tundra. This is the non-hybrid version. I believe it's a 3.5 liter V6. And it's the first time I'm changing the oil on this truck. Uh, a lot of times I'll take it to the dealer, but this is a break-in cha oil change, so I figured I'd try to do it myself. I've already got all my supplies and... I think I know what I'm doing, but we might be learning some together. I'm also not going to do this with any kind of a ramp or anything like that. I'm going to be uh, just doing it with the stock truck just sitting here in my garage. So that should be interesting as well. Um, I think I can do it, but we'll see how it goes. I've already got my uh, oil cap off, and that's right here. And then I've got my, my dipstick removed uh, from, from here. Went ahead and pulled that out, cleaned that off with a paper towel. And then I've got a drain pan for my oil filter. I've got a two foot length of hose here. It's a five eighths hose, and that's going to be for the oil, uh, help the oil filter drain out. And then underneath of the truck, I've got my oil drain pan and then I've got my ratchet here with a 14 millimeter socket and a 12 millimeter socket. 14 for the oil drain plug and 12 will be for the, to take off the, the little soft um, skid plate or whatever you want to call it up underneath the truck here. And then I've got my Mobile One oil filter and I've, I went with the, since it's only going to be in the truck for 3,000 miles, I've heard good things about the Kirkland full synthetic oil, so I'm going to be using that uh, zero W20 weight. Got two five quart jugs. I think it was something like 37 or 38 dollars for 10 quarts, so not a bad deal at all. Uh, we need 7.7 .7 quarts uh, total for this oil change. All right, so up underneath of the truck here, got to move this out of the way so we can get to the oil filter and i'm going to try to do it by just un undoing this bolt and this bolt here and that's a 12 millimeter socket so right above this this plastic uh that's where right there that is where you're going to put your drain hose, that 5 8 hose, and then right above that, you, there's your oil filter right above it, okay? And then it'll drain through that plastic where I'm going to insert the hose there. So I'll go ahead and put that hose on. But first we need to drain the oil. I've got my 15 quart oil drain pan with the little plug there loosened up. And then I also loosen that little, uh, or un unhook that uh, little thing so that more it'll drain better. And then we're going to take our oil out right here. That's going to be your drain plug. And that's going to be a 14 millimeter socket wrench. starting to drip and get a paper towel just in case okay and hopefully it is draining in there because it is coming out fast it's uh, the engine still kind of warm so Probably should have worn some eye protection. I actually got splashed on my face when it started shooting out. <laughs> so, and I have the, the drain plugs in there somewhere. I have no idea. I tried to hold on to it, but it just started coming out so quickly that uh, it was nothing I could really do. So, you know, lesson learned to use eye protection. And, you know, you, there's actually some you know that splashed on the tire and and stuff like that so came out with a lot of force 
And uh, thankfully, it wasn't so hot that it burned my face that I know of. We'll let it drain for a while. All right, as you can see, it is still dripping out of there pretty good. So we're going to wait till that really slows down to to a drip before we plug it back up. Let it no no rush, you know. Let it drain as long as possible. And then in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and take off the oil filter and let that drain through the the hose here that I've got running into my uh, drain pan and you can see the hose is actually running right into that plastic port I guess if you will that runs underneath the oil filter so once we unscrew the oil filter the oil will run down into this hose this 5 8 uh, piece of uh, hose that I got from Advance for I think two dollars and it'll go into that drain pan and that way I don't have to worry about oil coming out of the oil filter draining all over like my face and this soft uh, cover and other parts of the truck at least in theory we'll find out in a moment I now have on some eye protection because I am not getting splashed in the eyes with hot oil anymore so at least we are now being a little more safe Here you can see the oil filter and you can see some scrape marks on it and that's because I'm actually using a pair of like channel locks to assist me in getting it off if you can't remove it because it's too tight for your hand and you don't have an oil filter wrench that fits your oil filter you can actually use you know some some channel locks uh, just make sure that you're uh, you know matching the the angle of the oil filter as you remove it. See, it's starting to turn now. Okay, and I can I can hear it draining, and you can actually uh, I can hear it starting to drain through the tube. So I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna keep loosening it a little bit. Let that oil drain out. If you look down into the pan, you can see that the oil from the filter is starting to come out of the tube. So instead of all over my face, the oil is coming out through the tube. So that kind of, or through the hose. So that, that's working out great. Thank goodness. Our oil flow has started to just be at a dip now and I've got the oil filter off when I unscrewed it all the way and separated it from where it screws onto the engine there was definitely a a larger flow of oil that I could hear come down this hose and that's really that when it really starts to you know be a concern about coming down and get you know making a mess everywhere and then also getting all over you while you're trying to pull the filter off so the, with that channel up there i was able to unscrew it all the way pull it just a little bit away and kind of tap it on that cha that channel and have that oil come down this tube and then as i pulled it further away i started to angle it up like that that and then i was able to com get the oil filter down away from the vehicle without getting any oil on me at all which is kind of a miracle all right so and in a minute we'll probably cut this open to see if there's any metal shavings any evidence of shavings metal shavings inside the oil filter this is at uh we're at about 1900 miles on the truck now this is what you want you want your drainage to have slowed down to pretty slow drip and you could probably wait even longer and it'll slow down even more now you're supposed to replace this blue gasket 
they, this oil's only been in this truck for not even 2,000 miles. So I'm going to reuse the gasket. I'm pretty sure it's going to hold up just fine. We'll go ahead and uh, reinsert the, the oil plug here. And then uh, we'll take a paper towel. And clean it up. If you want to buy uh, the gaskets, you can get them on Amazon. I think you can get like a 12 pack for, or more for something like 10, 8.99 or something pretty inexpensive. All right, the torque spec on this is 30 foot pounds. If you have a torque wrench and you want to get the exact torque on that. There's the new oil filter. It's a mobile one filter. Uh, you can also use, of course, the Toyota OEM filter or uh, the Fram titanium. Any of those are, are good filters. Um, but before we put this on, we're going to, around this gasket here, this little rubber gasket, we're going to put some new oil just to make sure that it seals properly with the engine. Just like that, a light coat of the new oil on that gasket. All right, I am. Uh, I'm leaving this hose on for just in case there's any more dripping out. Uh, but got the new oil filter on here. It took a little bit of feeling around because I can't really see exactly what I'm doing, but I was able to feel where it went onto the engine. And we'll go ahead and hand tighten this. What you want to do is you want to hand hand tighten it, and then once it's tight then you want to go just about a maybe a little like a quarter of a turn past hand tight and that's it you don't want to use a, a wrench to tighten tighten down the oil filter once you've got the oil filter on don't forget to reconnect your soft uh, undercover here with these two bolts one and two so kind of a funny story before we put the the new oil uh, in, into the truck and uh, check the levels and everything this i had the my phone actually like balanced up underneath of the truck so i can get good lighting for the camera and then when i was taking the the hose out uh for the oil filter drain tube uh the whole phone fell in the oil pan so it wasn't a lot of oil but the whole front the whole phone was just slapped right into the oil seems to be okay but um let's just say it's uh <laughs> it's an experience all right in preparation to put your new oil into the engine you want to make sure that your filter if you've used it before is clean on the inside make sure that there's nothing no like pieces of dirt or anything down in there before you start filling up your your engine all right so 7.7 .7 quarts and and earlier i said that uh this was a 3.5 liter engine I'm, I'm pretty sure i said that um it's a 3.4 liter v6 so uh silly me just want to make sure that I corrected that at some point. All right, let's put in the new oil. All right, this is zero W20 oil. Remember to make sure that you're, before you start adding oil, that your oil plug is on and that your oil filter is on 
Otherwise you're going to have a mess and you're going to waste all your oil. Definitely want to make sure that you invest in a good oil uh, funnel, a good funnel like this. Otherwise it takes forever and you're going to make, you're going to get oil everywhere. All right, so that's five quarts. Now we need 2.7 more. So when I get, in order to get 2.7 more, we can see that the quarts are actually kind of measured out on the side here. You can see this is on the Kirkland product. Hopefully your oil has something similar where you can actually see how much oil is in there. And so we need to um, use a, about 2.7 quarts. So we want to make sure that 2.3 quarts is all that's left in here. So 2.3 quarts somewhere about you know here just under two and a half that's what we want left in the bottle okay bottle number two we're going to use 2.7 quarts so we want 2.3 quarts left in this five quart bottle That's about two point, probably add just a little bit more. I think we're close. Okay, so that's just over two quarts, just a tiny bit more and I think we're good. Could probably be a little more scientific than that, but I think we're close. All right, and we'll go ahead and replace the cap. And then we'll put the dipstick back in as well, which is all cleaned off. And then we're going to go ahead and start, we're going to go ahead and start the engine so that it, we can fill up the oil filter and, uh, and then we'll let it sit for a moment to check our oil levels to make sure that they're good. And we'll also make sure that we don't have any leaks that are coming out of like our oil drain plug or the oil filter, because that would be certainly a disaster. We're going to start her up. We're not going to reset the oil life light or anything. Just going to run it for about 30 seconds just so the filter can fill up and the engine can fill up. Okay, we've let the engine sit after we started it up and, and let it run for uh, about 45 sec seconds to a minute. Uh, now we're going to check. I've let the engine sit for about five minutes so the oil levels can settle. And the oil filter should be filled up now. So we'll go ahead and pull the dipstick, clean it off, and, and check the level. All right, that oil is so clean, it's very difficult to see, but I can see it. I can see it on the stick between the two dots right in the middle, so that's where we need it to be. All 
Go ahead and put our dipstick stick back in and, and we are good to go. This oil is only from the oil filter and so I was just looking at it to make sure there was nothing that I couldn't see anything obvious as far as shavings. You can see a couple tiny little particulates floating in there, but I don't know how much you'd be able to see it in the oil anyway. So we'll we'll uh, cut into the oil filter and see if we can take a look at that. Okay, now we're going to cut this oil filter open, the old one, and see if we can take a look inside at the element. In order to do that, all you have to do is cut into this lip on the outside okay there all right got it to break took took a lot of uh, a little bit of effort there but All right, I've almost. <clears throat> I've almost got the the this uh, edge off all the way around. So we're getting close. Oh. All right. Okay, so from here we can take the element out. I think uh, that piece on top is from the filter, that's why it's black. some light on this all right I'm gonna start inspecting this going through it All right, looks like that to me looks like a little bit of debris, uh, metal shavings right there. It's probably a normal, a normal amount, but you can, if you can see right there, right there, and uh, can. Yeah, that's a piece of uh, something shiny on my finger there. I'll uh, put it down for a second and get oil all over my finger. So, okay, something sparkly and fl metal fleck right there. So there is a little bit in there. This is. This is why it's good to Okay. This truck has 19 not even 1900 miles on it. I mean, 
mean, largely I'm not seeing much of anything. Everything looks pretty good. See a little bit in there, right uh, right down here, on my, this side of it. A little bit of fleck in there, not a whole lot, just a little tiny bit. I can see just the tiniest little bit right here, right down in there. All right, so the more I go through this filter, the more I'm seeing tiny little bits of metal in the filter. Not a lot, but it makes me grateful that I did change the oil, uh, you know, early on, and didn't wait till the 5,000 miles. A lot of them have nothing. It's like opening up a change purse. Nothing's inside, but. Every now and then you'll see a tiny little fleck of something. actually see I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera there's a little bit of flakes in there a little bit down there near the bottom try to get some light in there it's kind of difficult to see very very light amount of gold gold fleck Now you can really see it. As I pour this oil out, I can actually see it running out with the oil. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think that's probably normal, you know, I don't think that's anything huge, but you know, this is why it's good to do a break-in oil change. Just looking down at it from above here, you can see, uh, I, I can see the little bit of metal fl flake in the oil. I just wanted to give you guys one more look in the daylight because you can really see the the metal in there again it's not a huge amount but it's definitely there and so the oil filter is definitely doing its job all right guys thanks so much for watching today this was definitely eye-opening for me um just seeing that after 1900 miles you know there is some not just tiny little amounts you know i think it's normal uh of flaking uh metal in, in the uh, oil and in the filter and so you know I, I think it's important to when you get a newer vehicle on you to make sure that you're doing you know under 5,000 miles you know 1,500 something like that 
do your first oil change uh, and kind of get that break-in oil out of the out of the engine they used to do it I recommend it years ago manufacturers did and now they've gotten away from it they just say do it at 10,000 miles can you imagine letting your engine go 10,000 miles what kind of um, debris and, and oil and stuff like that there'd be in the engine so I'm sorry in metal flakes there'd be in the oil so probably a good idea to do it sooner um, I, I plan on changing mine every 5,000 miles after this um, might take it into the to the dealer sometimes too, but because um, I know that I've got some some a couple of free ones uh, with the purchase of the truck, um, I am proud of myself because I was able to do it with no ramps, and so it is possible to do it uh, with a stock height truck and not using any ramps. It was uh, a little bit of maneuvering around underneath the vehicle, um, but and definitely ramps would have made it easier. So pr try to use those next time, but. Uh, it's good to know that you can do it without ramps if uh, if you want to. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and please like this video. It really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching and God bless. We'll see you in the next video.